sound on the move. And remember, as we read, try to visualize what's happening. I'll give you some cues as well. Sound on the move. We have our picture. Wonder what that animal is. I don't think I've seen one like that before. And our table of contents. Today we're reading up until page 13, so that means we're going to read how do animals communicate, how do humans communicate, how do messages travel through air, water, and ground, how do the mountain bluebirds communicate. How do animals communicate? Big or small, animals all over the world communicate. Animals communicate for many reasons. They communicate to find mates, to send warnings, and more. Animals can send some messages using body language and other signals. However, they often need to rely on sound. Different kinds of animals make many different sounds. Still, animal sounds all have one thing in common. All of these sounds have to travel to reach other animals. Sometimes animal sounds have to travel very long distances. Right now I'm visualizing what it looks and sounds like when an elephant communicates. I can picture in my head an elephant raising its trunk a little bit and making a sound to send it off through the grasslands. Maybe you're thinking, visualizing, what it looks like for a cricket to communicate. How do humans communicate? Just like other animals, humans have lots of different ways to communicate. We can point, smile, frown, laugh, or cry. Of course, we also talk. When we talk, we form words with the mouth, but that's not all. To speak, we push the air out of the lungs, up the throat, and out of the mouth. Along the way, air moves through a structure in the throat called the voice box. We have an image here of a mouth, the voice box, and our lungs. And our caption says, just like other animals, we have structures that help us make sounds. As the air from the lungs passes through the voice box, it vibrates the vocal cords. The vocal cords are flaps of skin and muscle on the sides of the voice box. The vibration of the vocal cords creates sound. The sound travels up the throat, out the mouth, and through the air until it reaches the person who hears us. That person is the listener. As you read this book, you might notice that the structures some animals use to communicate are similar to the structures humans use. Of course, you'll also see some big differences in the ways animals make sounds to communicate. How do messages travel through the air, water, and ground? Many animals send sounds through the air just like us. Others communicate underwater. Some animals even send sounds through the ground. The air, the water, and the ground are all materials. So is everything else you can touch. Materials are made of millions and millions of tiny pieces called particles. Particles are too small to be seen, even with a microscope. We can't see particles, but we can visualize them. The diagram on the next page can help. Particles can move. Even in solid material like the ground, the particles can move a little bit. Animals send out sounds by moving the particles that make up materials like the air, water, and ground. Let's look at some examples of animal communication. We'll zoom in on this invisible world of particles to see how sounds travel through different materials. We have some images here. I see all these little circles, these little dots. Let's actually zoom in on that. And it looks like they're moving a little bit. My caption says the ground, the water, and even the air are all made of tiny particles. Looks like these ones are moving a little bit more than these. So I'm visualizing the particles in the ground moving a little bit, and I'm visualizing the particles in the water moving more. And these ones look really far apart and they look like they're moving in all different directions. So I'm picturing the particles in the air moving around a lot. How do mountain bluebirds communicate? Mountain bluebirds are common in the mountains of the western United States. These birds spend most of their time flying through the air. At dawn, mountain bluebirds sing a loud chirping song. They sing a softer warbling song during the rest of the day. Like all birds, mountain bluebirds use the air to communicate. Air is the material that mountain bluebird songs travel through. 
Remember that air is made up of tiny particles. We can't see these particles, but a diagram like this one can help us visualize them. What do you notice about the air particles? You might see that the particles have a lot of room to move freely. Think about the air that's around you right now. If you move your hands through it, it doesn't feel like there's anything stopping your hands. But there are tiny, tiny particles all throughout the air. Mountain bluebirds are a type of songbird. All songbirds have a special body part called a syrinx. The syrinx is different from the human voice box. With its syrinx, a mountain bluebird can make two sounds at the same time. To make sounds, a bluebird sends air through its syrinx. The moving air vibrates the walls of its syrinx. And over here we have an image. It's an interesting looking structure. Our caption says, do you notice that the syrinx splits into two parts? This allows mountain bluebirds to make two sounds at the same time. Man, I wonder if we can make two sounds at the same time. Try it. When the syrinx walls vibrate back and forth, they disturb the nearest particles of air. These particles then collide with the air particles next to them. Those particles collide with the next particles over and so on. We call this pattern of motion a sound wave. The vib vibrating syrinx is the source of the sound wave. The sound wave travels by way of particle collisions all the way to the bird hearing the call. That bird is the listener. Our caption says this diagram shows air particles colliding in a wave pattern. It represents the sound wave of a mountain bluebird song. The sound wave begins at a source and travels to the listener. Gosh, this diagram reminds me of something. It reminds me of one of the waves that we saw last week. I wonder if it reminds you of the same thing. So before we go today, I want you to think about what did you visualize as you read? Take a second after this video is open, describe what you pictured in your mind. What was something that we read about that you pictured? Remember that we're thinking about the question, what can sound travel through? You practice this a little bit around your house, and then we read about what this looks and sounds like with animals. Think about what you read and think about the sounds that you investigated in class. What can you say so far about what kinds of things sound energy can travel through? Is it everything? Is it only some things? Take that thought with you. We're going to think more about that tomorrow. Our vocabulary word that we're adding today is material. Material is just the stuff that makes up everything. There's a material on your shirt. There's a material on your bed. There's a material of your hair. All materials are different. That's the end of our lesson today. We will see you tomorrow.